Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a pretty epic deck as we're featuring three copies of O'Hare Pak Patik, deepest epic as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. This 4 mana 4-3 four, legendary god has flying and says whenever we cast an instant spell from our hand it gains a rebound, meaning we exile it and at the beginning of our next upkeep we may cast that card from exile without paying its mana cost. And then if our god were to die it transforms into a land which can eventually transform back into to the creature half. So the main synergy we're trying to exploit in this deck is our god alongside the various adventures, because let's say we make a 2-2 knight at instant speed with virtue of loyalty while controlling our god, we exile it, and then when replaying it with rebound, instead of making another knight token, which is an option, we can cast the 5 mana enchantment without paying its mana cost. So that's a very nice discount that also generates a lot of value. And then alongside a virtue of loyalty we've got a lot of tokens, so that's also part of our game plan. We've got two copies of the whale, which can also adventure for two mana, and then a cast the six mana creature for free if we can rebound it. And then a twining twins can also maybe flicker a creature, re-enabling an ETB effect, or maybe flicker an opposing card, and then get a 4-4 flying vigilance for free as well. So those are some pretty cool synergies with Pank Patik. Then we also have some other instants, two copies of Consider to surveil one draw card, and then some removal spells that we can rebound, get lost, and soul partition are also quite flexible. So no matter the board state, we usually have something we can target with these when rebounding. And then another important card here is a Meeting of Minds, a 4 mana instant with Convoke, letting us draw two cards. And since we have all these tokens we can play early, the goal is to play Pank Patik and then immediately be able to convoke a meeting of minds to draw two and then rebound it, drawing two again. So even if the opponent does have some removal for our god, we'll still get some nice value in the meantime. So let's take a look at some of our token makers, besides our virtue of loyalty, which is more of a two drop, same with the whale. We've got our Lunark Veteran at one mana, gaining extra life, very helpful against the red aggro. And then a Spyglass Siren, also a pretty decent card in this deck as a 1-1 flyer. Being blue means it can tap for Convoke alongside Meeting of Minds, whereas most of our other creatures are white, so that doesn't necessarily pay for the full Convoke. And then the Siren can also make a map token when it enters, which provides a bit of value. And flickering it with our Twining Twins is also good value, since we get to make another map. Then at 2 mana we've got the full set of Resolute Reinforcements, making 2 one ones, and this is also fine to flicker, making an extra 1-1 one -one in the process. And then at 3 mana the full set of Sanguine Evangelist, which is a 2-1 with Battle Cry, so that can pump our team when it attacks, makes a 1-1 one -one bat token with flying when it enters, and when it dies, so also pretty resilient. And then finally Ether Channeler, also quite flexible, can make a 1-1 one -one bird when it enters, but typically we're drawing a card or bouncing and opposing a non-land permanent back. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much our entire deck. Our mana base also has the new Restless Anchorage, which can turn into a flyer that makes a map token when it attacks. And then a Mirex making extra tokens can also help out in those grindier matchups. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and we've got our gods and double virtue of loyalty. So sign me up. Maybe turn one veteran, turn two siren and explore since we really want to hit our land drops to get up to four. And then save these until after we have our god in play. Up against poison most likely, could be enchantments as well. All right, maybe now go Siren plus tap land and then we can explore next turn. And I'll hang back for the time being human, so I guess never mind, just some multicolor legends deck. They typically don't have a lot of removal for our creatures, so let's explore on the flyer. And we found a land, excellent, play that while it's untapped. And then, not sure yet if I'm gonna play anything else out here, since waiting might be beneficial. I'll just hang back. Attacking for one, probably not super relevant. And Adlin is next. Alright, I think I'll have to make a 2-2 here. Since get lost doesn't work because of Skrelv. But we can at least block the 1-1 one -one token. Or double block Danik. We'll see if they want to use Skrelv. Block 
blocking the token might actually be better. That way I don't give up any of my creatures, which we want to have in play for Virtue of Loyalty. So, possible that they have a Brutal Cathar. Excellent, we drew Meeting of Minds, which I can immediately cast during the opponent's turn with Convoke, and then we'll get four cards total out of it. So this is kind of the perfect setup. So even if they do have removal, we'll at least draw four cards. If not, I don't mind getting a Virtue of Loyalty without paying for it. An Impacal makes sense. So that can get pretty big, especially for opponents also playing Roaming Throne, naming human. So good to have our blockers back, and then we can still tap them afterwards. Can eat some of the 1-1 tokens. Opponent activates Skralv, naming blue. So Adlin's gonna go unblocked probably. But we can still eat the tokens. And Convoke. Skralv is now tapped, so we can get lost both Adlin and an Impakal. Yeah, this is going to be a massacre. So cast our 2-2 token, which will turn into the enchantment. And then get lost, probably starting with Adlin, and then next turn we might have to take out Skralv. And then could hang back, could start attacking. I guess playing defense for now is fine. And then once we drop Virtue of Loyalty, we can attack and have our creatures back. So, Jodath the Unifier. Yeah, that's quite scary. Explains the mana base. Cavern of Souls, of course, a great addition for that deck as well. So let's line up some blocks. Do we want to take 13? It's a bit risky. I do get to take out Skralv next turn. I would still like to preserve my creatures as much as possible. If we want to take out Animpakal, they get to take out most of my creatures. So yeah, maybe it's still just block like so. Maybe chump with a Siren. So we stay at a healthier life total. And then now we'll have to start by taking out Skralv. Opponent protects Joda. And cast our Virtue of Loyalty. Sweet. Find another one. Alright, so we can play the token out, maybe after playing another veteran. And then we can reinforcements and make a token. Just do it now. Want our creatures to pick up plus one counters. So I'm just gonna play out everything. And then now we're free to attack since we'll get to untap our creatures. Back up to 15. All right, I'm not hating my position. Although Joda is quite powerful, so we'll have to wait and see. If they play the partners, that can distribute a ton of plus one counters. And that's also quite synergistic with Anim Pakal. Opponent's gonna go digging with a map. Plaza of Heroes could also come in handy. And any additional plus one counters, of course, will generate more tokens as well. But we can chum block for quite some time. Yeah, we might have to try Five Color Legends again now with Cavern of Souls naming human in addition to Secluded Courtyard. And then the synergy between Anim Pakal and the partners is especially nice. Opponent 
opponent with Airtai to try and counter our Virtue. Fair enough. It's another Denic, so they can only keep one. Do get to draw. And a Soul Partition, so now we can get rid of Joda, which is probably their scariest card. Uh, which means not getting to play Virtue of Loyalty. That's okay. So now their team is a lot more manageable. Can explore. Maybe on a Knight, so that can maybe attack past an Impakal. Ether Channeler, I'll keep. And these two can attack. Okay, next turn we should be able to set up an all out attack to close out the game. Can animate our anchorage as well. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, we've got a nice hand. Facing a familiar opponent. Might want to hang on to consider until after we play our god. We'll see what we're up against. Merfolk, okay. So they might have a Larsenist to remove our god. I think I still want to curve out smoothly and then look for things we can... Rebound. Okay, reinforcements. I don't mind trading for a scout. Although we have to watch out for the Merfolk Lord here as well. Only one land. Yeah, let's just trade. Don't think we want to necessarily race when we've got the late game inevitability. Turn to Wayfinder. So we could trade for Wayfinder if they have the plus one plus one Flash Lord. Could turn this into a 3-4, which may not work out. So I might have to take a hit. And then we're hoping to pick up some adventures here so we can play them for free. Yep, there's a Larsenist, so could have also been a nice answer to our deepest epoch. Hope they don't find a land. Another Larsenist in Graveyard, and there's the Whale. Alright, so if we can untap here and put our Whale to use, we might have a very nice couple turns lined up. Alright, third Larsenist. So I'm gonna have to get Lost Larsenist to get our God back. Okay, so let's see here. We want to get lost the Larsenist, get our god back, and then we could still use the whale as well. I think I need to play out Igenjo since we also need to pay the ward. Although it's reasonable to try and hang on to it as well. And hopefully we don't run into a counterspell. Giving the map tokens maybe not the best in an explorer deck. Make disappear counter unless we pay four. So that's not gonna work out for us. So then I'll just have to use the whale to get our god back. And then sacrifice evangelist to pay the ward. Uh, and then we can still ambush the other larcenist at least. But now we won't be able to uh, get our adventure half for free. So 
So hopefully we draw an adventure card right now. Just the reinforcements. Alright, hit for five. And get our evangelist going. God's gonna get turned into a treasure, but that can be used to cast our whale. Ooh, nice meeting of minds could come in handy. Let's say we main phase the whale. That gives us a blue creature. And then meeting of minds. And hit our land drop. Don't have any utility lands, unfortunately. So yeah, sacking the god while it's a treasure does not transform it back, sadly. Deep Fathom Echo to explore turn after turn. And the Pilgrimage, also pretty nice with Merfolk. Larsenist, just a pirate. Alright, so our hand's not that great. The Whale can attack, trade for an Echo. If I go all out, Evangelist dies. They can eat a token, take 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, fall to 2. Could still be worth it. They could also chump the whale. Alright, just need a little bit to cross the finish line. We get an extra token here as well. This would be a great board to find Virtue of Loyalty as well. Echo reveals Schooner. And a Soul Partition can clear the Echo now. Hexcatcher. That happens, so attack all out, and that should be game. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. Anchorage on one, turn to maybe reinforcements. Got some removal. And then a channeler also gives us quite a few options. It's gonna be a trespasser on curve. And channeler can just draw here. Try and find our god. And then next turn maybe evangelist siren will be the play. Could also remove a shield root if that shows up before taking our draw step. It's gonna be a Sorin instead. Makes a vampire. Okay, so what are our options? Could remove both Trespasser and the vampire. And then take out Sorin. Just have to discard a card. Might still be worth it. So soul partition the token. And then let's say we get lost trespasser. Discarding siren. Maybe discarding whale over siren was still reasonable so we could play evangelist and siren. Assemble an army of flying creatures. Opponent's got another trespasser. So the ground's getting pretty stalled. Would love to find our god. Now we can still play Evangelist, keep up our two mana interaction. And 
and there's also creature land we can maybe put to use. Infernal Grasp Evangelist. We could soul partition it and then be able to replay it for three mana. Also makes it so that it stays daytime. Although if this dies, it does still leave behind a 1-1 one -one token, so it's not the end of the world. And there's a Gix Yogmoth Praetor. Okay. Happy to block the Trespasser here. Their opponent's going to try and grow it. Five mana shield right on top. A reason to keep the reinforcements around so we can sacrifice that instead of maybe a channeler. And then now Gix also 4-4. Four, four. I don't think we soul partition yet. Can play veteran keep up or two man interaction while the bats attack. And then we'll sacrifice the reinforcements here. Gigs back on top. And triple block. Don't think we want to soul partition Shieldred. Okay, Virtue of Loyalty isn't bad. So hit for two can start by playing the enchantments, or we can just. Uh, Get back Phantom, make a token, and next turn go for the enchantment. If we let them play Gix, then Shieldroots will connect, since we're not going to want to chump and draw a card. But then next turn we'll be able to interact while increasing the size of our board. Doesn't take long for Virtue to take over. can also play Whale in our turn if we draw land. It looks like Liliana will get rid of our Soul Partition now. I'm tired of your secrets. Shieldred can attack. Draw a card. So the bats can finish off Liliana. And we found a land, so now I'm going to main phase the Whale so it enters untapped. Another Liliana, okay. A fight? And you think you can win? We also have Mirex and our Anchorage, which we can still put to good use. Opponent discarding their own cutdown. Okay, that's totally acceptable. So Phantom play Evangelist. Can ignore Liliana at this point, just go face. And whale opponent could double block. So don't see a reason to attack with it here. Shielded the apocalypse is probably not gonna solve their problem. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with not the most exciting hand ever, but looks keepable. Can draw with two channelers and then hope to find our god to combo with our adventure. If we're up against the red aggro, we might have to interact early. Looks like they're debating whether they want to use a burn spell. 
And a Scoundrel's next. Goes for Wicked Roll. Might have wanted to Soul Partition in response here, so they didn't drain us. Now I think using the Whale is also reasonable. Soul Partition is going to be better when used on a 3 mana creature. So that uh, it's going to be a bit more expensive for them to replay. Right, channel or draw card, need to hit our land drops. And these double or darker wastes are also hurting us. If we find a land, maybe go Veteran plus Evangelist, gain some life back. Play with fire that they still had left. So we fall to 15. Alright, land is good. So now Veteran plus Evangelist doesn't make me lose any life. So I want to try and flicker either Evangelist or Channeler. I guess Monstrous Rage on Scoundrel would not increase its toughness since they already have a Wicked Roll. So you can either double block Adversary, which is maybe bad if they have Spot Removal for Evangelist, or I single block Scoundrel and accept the trade there. Yeah, opponent goes for Monstrous Rage, but they only get to keep one roll token, so we still trade here. Even if we take a bit of Trample, that's alright. Another are darker wastes, not the matchup for it. But uh, yeah, channeler, draw a card, and then we can still use the Swiss Spiral. All right, deserted beach. So might want to use this now so they can't fizzle my adventure, which would be pretty bad. Yeah, I think that's safest. Even if we go shield down here for a second. And then we'll just attack. And draw another card. Although next turn I can play Twins Keep Up Soul Partition or play Whale. So maybe we're just better off bouncing. So we don't fall behind on board. can main phase the whale so it enters untapped. Or we can play Twins Keep Up Soul Partition. If the attack with Foundry sort of implies another Monstrous Rage, but the roll token would fall off end of turn when it ceases to uh, be a creature. So I think that's totally fine if they want to make that play. Just pushing a bit of trample damage. Okay, so main phase whale I kind of like. Even though the twins having vigilance is also great in the matchup. A lightning strike goes upstairs. So our opponent's on the burn plan, but with a veteran in play that's going to be tricky. Play evangelist. Can reinforcements at instant speed to gain two. And we should be out of burn range here. Maybe a bit weak to an end of festivities, dealing one to my team, but then we still have the whale. Adversary plus Scoundrel. And yeah, that's not gonna work out for them. Alright, sweet. So didn't get to pull off for a combo with our god, but uh, yeah, showing that the deck is still functional without it. And Evangelist also just being a great card, leaving behind all these extra tokens onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, hopefully our knights line up in the matchup, because we've got a lot of them. 
play veteran. Also reasonable to go tamped beach, turn two, make a knight, turn three, double spell. So we don't take damage in the meantime. Opponent on a red-white tokens deck. Alright, so tokens versus tokens. Making a 2-2 two -two here could line up quite nicely. For now, frontliner. And a lookout, so opponent's going wide. Maybe setting up some convoke cards. And our opponent knows not to attack into a token from virtue. Ooh, nice meeting of minds is excellent. So if we want to play it, we still need a blue mana untapped. So I can make another knight and then convoke it. I think I prefer that over Evangelist. And then Knight Token could attack. Do you want to double block a lookout and a token? It's not amazing for me, but taking care of the flyer might be worth it, since it lines up quite well against our bat tokens. And our opponent's just going to take it. So we can do everything at instant speed. A lookout gets in for one. That's fine. And we might see a convoked knight errant now. Or this might be a demolition. Yep, there's a knight errant. Yeah, that resolves. Finding recruiter, that one's gonna hurt, and another lookout. At least our opponent's stuck on two lands, so we've got that going for us. Tap carefully here so we don't take damage. And draw two, hope to find our god. There we go. Okay, I think that's worth playing now. And then next turn we get a free virtue of loyalty, basically. Don't expect too much removal from the opponent's deck, since they need a critical mass of creatures for Knight Errant. For now an Epicure. The Foundry is also not doing them any favors, but they can still maybe sank the Blood Token to draw land. They could have another Knight Errant here as well. So reinforcements discarded. And an attack for four. Yeah, we want to preserve our creatures because of virtue of loyalty here. Okay. So, yeah, can play virtue, which will then go to exile where we can replay it. But instead of making another knight, we'll play the enchantment. And we'll hang back. And then next turn I can play another Virtue of Loyalty, so we'll have two in play. Knight Errant attacks alongside the Lookouts. This might be a Witch Talker Frenzy taking out our god. But the damage has been done. Yeah, I'll just take the hits. With double virtue of loyalty, we don't want to trade off our creatures while they're small. So play virtue and play siren with one leftover mana to explore. Okay, pass it back, double pump, and next turn play a third Virtue. And that's enough for a concession, alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, don't have our god, but it seems functional enough. Can consider to try and hit our land drop here. Don't need another Evangelist just yet. Okay, so we'll make a 2-2 Knight most likely. And Dread Knight is not the best target for Get Lost, since it doesn't exile. So now we can play Evangelist and then next turn Convoke Meeting, or we can go Veteran and Convoke right now. To better hit our land drop for next turn. 
since we do want to get up to Virtue of Loyalty as quickly as we can. So we'll take three. Now let's respond. Alright, there's our god. So we would prefer to time it where we can get immediate value. But uh, it's going to be tricky, so I think we just play it. And then if we can untap, we can cheat our Virtue of Loyalty into play a turn sooner. Seems like they might have a cut down. Sadly, three toughness still dies to another virtue of persistence. At least if this turns into a land, we can cast our five drop next turn. And there's a cut down. So now it's potentially exposed to an edict effect as well. I welcome the opponent to cast a shieldred. It's gonna be Liliana, that's unfortunate, so. Yeah, losing the veteran definitely mattered. So we get to land. Next turn we can go wide with the evangelists, maybe the uh, phantom as well. And that can help pressure Liliana quite well. down to 10. The whale's a better answer to the Dread Knight, so can set that up next turn. And I'll ditch uh, Get Lost. Could also be an answer to the Virtue of Persistence, if they get to 7 mana. And they're shielded now. Okay, so probably Get Lost Shielded. And then I can tap this. And then I'm probably going to give up on the dream of transforming this. Before we run out our Virtue of Loyalty. Go for the throat on top, we don't mind. Opponent puts it in the graveyard since they need lands. And there's a Mitra's Foundry, so they're likely also playing with the uh, Tortoise. The Dread Knight on the bottom here. And Virtue kills Evangelist. Alright, so we don't have quite as much pressure now, but we can still run out of Virtue of Loyalty. So yeah, let's go ahead and play the Virtue. And that's enough for a concession, yeah, too many tokens for their deck to handle, they might not have any sweepers, and we'll eventually get there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, with uh, not the most exciting hand, but I'll keep it. Facing red aggro with turn 1 Kumano, it's always going to be an uphill battle. So we'll consider, turn to reinforcements, channeler making a token would let me convoke Meeting of Minds right away. I see red-green, so it might be a build with a couple pump spells and the uh, scamp audacity also makes sense. Yeah, that's one hard-hitting Swiss spear on turn two. Twining twins could flicker the Swiss spear. That might be worth keeping as well. So we've got a couple options here at instant speed. Yep, there's a scamp. Yep, 
and anger on etching. So if I flicker etching, they don't get to draw a card. Is that better than dealing with Swiss Spear? I guess next turn we can bounce it anyway. Yeah, let's deny the card draw. Does mean the Saga comes into play again from Chapter 1. Which may or may not be a good thing. Alright, now Soul Partition, also an answer to the Swiss Spear. Audacity says if it's put into a graveyard, so that's going to happen regardless of me bouncing or exiling. So I think Channeler Bounce makes sense. And then if we keep our blue creature, it's going to be easier to convoke the meeting. Could go Reinforcements, Virtue, and still Convoke. Opponent's got another Anger here, so I would be taking 6, but then I would die to the Scamp's ability. So I have to Chum Block, and then I would still potentially take 6. If I block here, they Trample for 2, so that doesn't really solve my problem. Well, that was a pretty good start from the red deck. Opponent likely has a burn spell in hand to finish us off. Can also proliferate the plus one counter on Swiss Spear, that's nice. And then we can either get lost Kumano or set up a block with our token. Alright, I guess we'll get lost here. Kumano puts us to one. Where's our Lunark Veteran when you need it? So, if I play Twining Twins, doesn't cost me any life. Can start attacking and blocking, might be better than making a bunch of small tokens which don't line up well against a 2 3 Swiss Spear. But I'm not loving my chances here. Third lands. Replay Swiss Spear. Can block it now. Okay, so now we can attack. And then if I go for reinforcements and virtue, I can still convoke Meeting of Minds. And we'll have a bunch of blockers. Could also consider in the attempt of drawing into a Lunar Veteran. I think it's better to just convoke here. So let's pass. can block and then convoke. Still in trouble if they have some pump spells here. So make a knight. Make two tokens. And then we'll have to see if we can beat a monstrous rage. Go to blockers. So Monstrous Rage here would essentially add 4 power, so they would still trample for 2. But if I put 2 more toughness in front, we die here, so I don't think we can beat Monstrous Rage. So probably shouldn't try to. Yep. Alright. Let's see what we would have drawn into. Another meeting and a soul partition. So going for the Consider, we could have potentially bottomed Meeting and then drawn into Soul Partition, which might have lined up better in the face of a Monstrous Rage. Oh well, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a Keepable Hand. Turn 1, go for Veteran most likely. And then we'll see if we need to interact or if we can draw. Alright, we found our God. All the more reason to maybe wait on casting Consider. Opponent Mono White. And a Vanguard. So, probably gonna use our removal here. Get Lost versus Soul Partition. I think we hang on to Soul Partition to maybe exile a more expensive card and for now deal with the Vanguard. 
Also feel like double soul partition might be better than double get lost later. Although it's a close call, actually. But yeah, exiling the Vanguard, making it cost four, is still pretty easy to replay. So hopefully we get to hit our land drops, play the God on four. We don't need to deal with a Brutal Cathar exiling it. But an Adlin is pretty scary in its own right. Okay, so we've got the lands lined up here. Might have to use the Whale on Adlin, since it's a bit more awkward to use the Whale when we have our God in play as opposed to Soul Partition, which we can use on whatever we want. So then our opponent will get to make a token here. Maybe Soul Partition still slightly better. It's hard to tell. If our opponent does have a Brutal Cathar for this, then Soul Partition would be the cleaner answer. So, yeah, I'll just pass. Let them make a token if they want to. If they play another Vanguard, we can pay the ward. Spellbook Vendor. That's fine. Don't think I'm trading Veteran for the 1-1. One -one. Might be useful to gain some life for, for Convoke later. And the Whale, unlike the Emperor, doesn't care about the creature being tapped, just has to be attacking. Opponent keeps Adlin on top. So if that's their play next turn, then uh, they're not answering the god, which is perfect. Opponent can explore just to get a counter here. And we'll hang on to consider. Okay. Cross our fingers for no Brutal Cathar. There's Adlin, alright. Vendor triggers. Probably putting a roll on itself. And I'll take four. Can block the 1-1. One -one. So, probably fine to just take my draw for now. Twining Twins could also be fun. So, let's say we start with Consider. Then I can still Adventure and Partition. Do not need Island. Find another Consider. Yeah, let's just exile Adlin while we can. And then I can attack. Twining Twins likely flickering the Spellbook Vendor to reset it before it triggers. And then we'll get a free 4 4 flyer. Alright, opponent's got the Brutal Cathar, but the damage has been done. Could also flicker Brutal Cathar. What does that do for me? Still comes back, end of turn. Um. I guess I can wait for them to attack and then flicker Cathar to set up a block, but then we don't get to copy this with uh, our ability. So I think this is totally acceptable. We'll find an answer to the Cathar at some point. And we've got a few spells coming up here. That's exciting. Skralv a bit late to the party. Opponent still keeps it. They want to protect the uh, Cathar. Huh, interesting. Not sure why we're getting the Twining Twins and the opponent's end step. Should only have them in our next upkeep when casting it with Rebound. So get back Soul Partition. Exile Brutal Cathar. And cast a consider. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. 
All right, so we got to see our Epic Tokens deck in action. And yeah, our god has some pretty nifty synergies with the various adventures, especially Virtue of Loyalty seemed easy to set up. And then also having Meeting of Minds as a way to get immediate value when playing our god means that even if it gets removed, we at least got to draw two extra cards. So that seems important as well. But if we don't draw our god, the deck is a little bit boring to play and not all that exciting. But at least it still seems functional enough that it can win games without it. So yeah, overall, an interesting experiment. Don't think it's going to necessarily be one of the more competitive decks in standard going forward, but maybe if we pick up more synergies with Pakpatik in the future, it can resurface and prove to be worth it. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!